Buckle up, people. This is Petrol Heads, and you are in for one heck of a ride. Each week on Petrolheads, we're at some event here in Northern Ireland. Here's a taster of what to expect this week. Lots of modified cars in all shapes and sizes. We've got two teams of car enthusiasts in a build-off challenge. And in this program, we head south for a disco with cars. This week, it's all about deep dish rims, fancy bodywork and state-of-the-art in-car techno. And if you haven't already guessed, we are in the world of the modified motor. Later in the programme, I go for a spin with drift champion Flat Eric. <laughs> There's a lot of preparation going on to make these cars show ready, so I'm taking some time out to find out what makes these modifiers tick. The best way to find out about a modified car and its culture is to ask its owner. We found this lot in Belfast. We're not all hooligans, we're not all boy racers, we're enthusiasts. I mean, I'm a married man with two kids as well, um, so obviously that always comes first, pay the mortgage, pay the bills. Whatever money's left at the end of the month, basically, is goes towards the car. Modifying cars are a very individual thing. A whole lot of folk may not like this car, but it's a car I've always liked, and I wanted to build it the way I wanted to build it. Yeah, I spend all my money on my car. Not drinking or smoking, you know, I love putting my money into my car. 9,000 to buy it. 12,000 to do it up. 6,000 to sell it. You can't start with a 1960s car, or you can start with a 2006 car. It's up to yourself. So, rule of thumb when modifying. Pick a car in good nick, spend as much as your bank balance or your understanding partner permits, but don't expect to make your money back as they're harder to sell and modifying your car will also make your insurance premium higher. I've had a total respray with it, I've had all the body work done. Had it smoothed in. It has the looks and it has the power as well. We may as well put a set of wheels on it and lower it. Start with the engine, super chip it, put an exhaust on, paint it, put a body kit on. You can do things with the girlfriend in the cheap, but normally when something goes wrong in your car, it just costs a lot of money. Modifying engines to increase performance is a popular thing and comes down to who's got the highest brake horsepower or brake to get the lingo. This car is getting tested for its brake on a rolling road. The car is fastened to the roller, which is connected to a computer, which determines the engine's output. The Skyline's owner is understandably nervous because the engines are revved to the max and occasionally blow up, which is very expensive. We built the engine, forged everything in it so it's stronger. I put two bigger turbos on it, HKS turbos on it. And the guys here at AI Motorsport put a boost control in it for me. Where they come out of Japan, about 280 brake. 499 brake. From 280 to 499 is a big, respectable jump, as they say. If I wanted to modify a car, what would be the tips that you would give me? I suppose you start off with something that's in pretty good condition already. And I would always go for something that's original, something that has me number four. Like the outside of the car. Mm -hmm. And I would always go for best tip, mild paint job. <laughs> <laughs> what I am keen to find out about is ice or in-car entertainment. Some of these cars have computer games, TVs, DVD players, the works. That's pretty cool, eh? 
but I'm a DJ and I thought I liked loud music until I met some of these boys. This exact fires about 153 decibels, which would be louder than the jet our aircraft taking off. It sucks the breath out of your mouth. Car stereo? This is a car stereo. I brought my own music for this gig, and there is no better woman to test this system than my girl, Mary J. Blige. This is the Vibe Tunnel, making its first appearance in Northern Ireland. It's got 140 speakers, 40 15-inch subwoofers, kicking out 330,000 watts. No you should feel the bass in this thing. It's worth pointing out, at full volume, it will split your eardrums. It's been a long week I put in my this is Fraser Scott here, and this is his tunnel, and he knows everything about it. Fraser, how long does it take you to create a tunnel like that? Um, it took the guys uh, only a month to put it all from scratch, to do all the work to create the, the tunnel. Um, what sort of decibels are we talking there? Um, we've never properly tested it, but you'd be approaching about 160 decibels, which is louder than an aircraft taking off. It's like rearranging your internal organs, <laughs> like punching you in the chest. It's worse, it makes you want to be sick. Do you ever spend a wee bit of time just sitting in there yourself enjoying the vibrations, do no, you? No, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I spend all my time standing here, I'm starting to go deaf in my left ear. But you should have wee earplugs and stick them in there to avoid yeah. that. So has, have you ever seen anybody being sick or anything? No, no, no. no. <laughs> For the few people, I'll, I'll go inside, we'll turn it on and I'll run straight back out again. <laughs> While I boogie on down to the biggest car stereo in the world, time to show you what's coming up. We have our build-off challenge teams to introduce, and it's round one in our own version of Formula One, the Petrol Heads Challenge Cup. Let me just remember this conversation. They said, would you like to change your wheels of steel for some deep dish rims? They told me there was going to be glamour. Why am I in a car park? More to the point, they said, look good, look sexy. I even wore my best hat for this occasion. And then they hand me this. This is Flat Eric. He's from Tipperary and happens to be the Irish Pro Drift Champion. For the uninitiated, drifting is, well, this. Like it coming in there and seeing a corner coming at you at that speed, and you're, you're looking at it out the side window of the car, you know. This is my first time in a drift car. I'm pleased I didn't eat breakfast this morning. <laughs> For those who don't know what drifting is, accelerate up to a corner at speed, using handbrake to make the car slide round it, use the clutch and throttle, and steer with the rear of the car. Eric's making this look easy, but trust me, sliding at speeds of 90 miles an hour is not for beginners. A fun day out for everybody. <sighs> That's not funny. You know, I've heard of guitarists making the guitar sing, but you actually made that car dance yeah. out there. I mean, is, is this something you've been doing for a long time? I mean, yeah, well, that's what drifting's all about. You know, it's all about yard control, not so much who's the best car, who's most horsepower, um, and that's the beauty of it, you know, it, it doesn't take a lot of money to get involved. <laughs> Are you always confident that everything's going to go OK? Because it looks scary. Yeah, so there's times when you're, you're sitting there ready to go out, particularly some of our tracks, which would be an oval-type track with a concrete wall, you know, just two feet away from you, and we're touching speeds at 70 miles an hour sideways. So there is that element of danger, and, but I think the more you think about it, the more likely you are, you're going to hit that wall, you know, so we just forget about it and go out there. And my own secret is just to try and enjoy it as much as I can. <laughs> but there's nothing like being at events, and then there's definitely nothing like being in the car, especially if you've never experienced anything like it before. And um, usually if anyone else sees a car slide and it's just out of control, you know, but this sort of stuff is uh, this is good fun, and I've yet to have someone in it that didn't really love it, you know. It's just a pure adrenaline rush for you, really, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. 